because we can only do one view of time at a time. So lots of single time slice projects for a long time. I would say since 2013, for about six years, we've needed a time slider, we've needed search, a few other things. I'll get to more exciting slides in this shortly. But the question is, and by the way, I'd like to keep this uh, informal, and you can ask questions. Thank you. I was hoping for a mapping-related question, Martine. Um, Do you know where the microphone is? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Seth Fitzsimmons. It's a rough crowd. It's a rough crowd. The hecklers are out. I love it. So a lot of people have asked me, you know, hey, you want to do historical mapping. Why don't you use system X, this one or that one? Oh, the data model's not suited for it. Um, any of 100 reasons. And I'll give you a few reasons, and we'll talk about one really quickly. It's here. It's built. It works. There's a big infrastructure around it. There's a conference you can come to and talk to people who know how to use this system. The data structure, while some people say it is uh, not appropriate, is amazingly powerful. And we can use it to our advantage. But the biggest thing, uh, I think, the biggest differentiating element of OpenStreetMap is that it is a shared database. It's all about sharing the information that you create. There's a lot of siloed history projects. You can go to many sites that have, hey, here's the mapping of post offices in the United States. Or, you know, as they do the Western migration, here's the growth of railroads. Here's uh, some explorer's routes. And you can time slide them. And they're all awesome. I love them. I mean, I really love them because I'm that kind of nerd. But they all stand alone. You can't combine them all. You can't say, hey, this is cool that I can see what was going on in the United States in 1850, what was going on in Japan in 1850. You can't slide it. That is mega powerful. And that's one of the reasons that I think even since then, in the six years, I've yet to hear a better argument for what other system we should be using. And I'd like to say thanks to all the people who've been doing this for a long time. Um, we've got a community that's kept it up and running. When the servers have gone down or been hacked or weird things, that's like a lot of operations that we can take for granted that OSM provides for us, but we can't use the OHM, can't use the OSM infrastructure, so we've got to do it on our own, and it's hard. Uh, and we've got some, over the last year or so, we've enlisted the aid of Green Info Network, and they have been doing a ton of work for us. Very reliable uh, partner, and I'd like to just give a shout out to that team. Seth is in the room. Uh, Jimmy Rocks is sleeping late. Um, and then we've recently signed up with DevSeed, and DevSeed and Sanjay and Sajad have uh, a history, actually, with this project prior to work coming on as contractors, and they're helping set up server. So big thanks to them. They've been amazing to work with and very supportive and creative. I'd like to point out that today, uh, we already have kind of inf an infrastructure. As I've said, since 2013, uh, we got the site up. The wiki's been up. The code is all available for the people who are here who are interested in dev. We, I welcome any developers who want to help contribute to this project. We've got a tasking manager so we can set up projects. I know people are familiar with that workflow. Tim Waters helped set up our, our, our Warper. We have a close tie with the Wiki Maps Foundation. It should be closer. They're starting to vectorize a lot of their information, and we can trace directly from their CC0 map <coughs> into OHM. And then I, we just got nominated up and running. But we've had a missing element in all of these issues. There's no time. We have a historical map with no concept of time other than a tag. That's not very fun to read, right? I can read that time is there, but I can't see things change. So what we've been working on is uh, solving this problem. And by the way, just to emphasize, when you don't have time, you look at all of time at once. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which isn't a lot of fun. Like, you can't even blur your eyes and, like, focus on 1878. And from this, this is a block in, in Seattle. You can see trees that are there from before it was settled, when it was just, like, you know, clapboard houses. You can see multiple things. This is pre- and post-fire. That's a lot of information. This is what it looks like in Jossum, right? Hard to filter. You got to figure out some things. And... Uh, tricks and trades, and some of the things we're working on. And I do want to say some of what we're doing is work in progress, so we're figuring it out as we go. Like, we start mapping in JAWS, and all of a sudden we go, wow, filters are probably pretty good. 
And then you start working with filters and you go, oh, how I thought filters might work isn't the right way to go about it. I've got to do different type of tagging. And so um, I guess part of the reason I'm giving this pitch is to invite people to come help me figure out how to work through these issues, because they're not impossible. Um, and by the way, uh, feel free to ask questions along the way if you like, even though I have the mic. Um, so to fix this, the things that uh, Green Info Network and the team have been working on are working in, I would call it in production, but not part of the official site. All right, we've had a staging site over in AWS, and we're running a time slider to demo, which we're going to get to, which will be exciting. Uh, we've customized some things in the ID editor to surface things like start date and end date, which are pretty much required fields. We don't want data in there that doesn't have start date and end date. Um, we've got a client that helps us filter the vector tiles. And then we've actually, one of the things that's been neglected since 2013 is that we haven't updated the OSM stack. So we haven't rebased or kept up to date. And we're going to uh, be up to date, which will be nice because there's cool features in the site that we can take advantage of. Now, under the covers, and this is where it starts to get exciting, is vector tile system. And one of the things I want to point out, so for those of you who aren't familiar with, who's not familiar with vector tiles? Everybody knows what a vector tile is? I'm ignoring you. You've ruled yourself out. OK, instead of sending to the client an actual picture to show up, it sends all the building blocks of a picture. And then it asks your browser to put the picture together. But before it does that, we filter it. So it just shows you the right time, and then it builds a picture. And I have Seth here. He's going to correct me when I'm wrong. Right, Seth? There we go. So we have taken, oh, and by the way, the existing OSM system, to be clear, still uses raster tiles. And how many people here have seen a demo of vector tiles in, in action? OK, cool. You'll see one before the end here. How many of you have seen vector tiles demoed that are connected to a database being updated in real time, as opposed to a planet dump? Are you sure? Yes. I know you are. OK. <laughs> but this is kind of a big deal. Like a lot of times, and a lot of demos either get like a daily update of something, or you know a weekly, or whenever they get the, they pull all the data out of OS, out of OSM and they put it into their database. We've got a real time update here. So you make an edit to OHM, it's going to show up on those vector tiles. This is a big deal. And I'm very excited. I'm, I'm getting to the demo, but I'm very excited because this is the slide. This is the cover slide uh, from 2012 a pitch seven years ago of an old map in Seattle. And this is, in our staging site, a map. So we've taken that old map, put it in there. It's not cool until you can change it. So we'll get um, And one point real quick, when you have all those uh, time layers in there, and I'm looking now because I can see I, it's easy to make mistakes, and those diagonal lines in there are mistakes. Um, but I started with a map that looked like this. It didn't even look like a map, right? It's a bird's eye view. So not everything that you're going to take from historical map, and that's usually the workflow, right? Take an old map, vectorize it, add the metadata, add the date tags, load it into the system. Here, we have a bird's eye view with some sort of projection, and you have to kind of eyeball and guess where it is. That's one data source. And that, that's what it ends up looking like post data rendering, because we don't have the cool uh, style sheet to show trees yet, but we'll get there. Here is what's more familiar to many people, an old Sanborn map. And there are these maps throughout the entire United States, many cities. And you know, do a few steps to get there and then trace that. And out pops this layer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, demo. That's just. Hmm. There we go. So this is what it looks like today. That's the traditional OHM. This is the, oh, oh, I didn't do that, did I? There we go. So that's Seattle. This is running off of the back end of OHM production. And then as we step through here, we can see the first settlers start to arrive. 
and that's from uh, a map just after the one that you just saw. The city name changes, and then boom. We start to see other mapping information, roads extend, the water fills in, docks are built, railroads laid, and then the buildings are built, or in certain cases, torn down and then destroyed, put back up. And then in 1889, there's a fire. So that is a little bit of the demo of, you know, at a very low level, what can be done. I thank you, but Seth should take a bow. <laughs> Seth and the other team. There's a lot of people behind that. So yeah, I find it very exciting because it's starting to realize, we're starting to show what's possible. Um, it's possible to do low-level city mapping. We can do state borders, um, high level. This is not the best demo right now because something's not working. Um, and we, ha we do have other people out there. Oh, here's another example of Krakow uh, going farther back. And you can see things like Country names. Okay, enough of that. Uh, you can see country names pop up and change. City limits start to emerge. Cities merging. Uh, river flows changing. River flows changing. Ah, oh, there we go. So, boom. So, and this is just very simple. That was like a uh, you know, kind of a one-time shot. But we have people out there who are doing really exciting things other than this. This is an example of a city uh, from, I believe, around 1900 that was mapped by a person who's studying how Jewish villages are emerging in Eastern Europe. So all over the world, there are people who are starting to get, get their hands dirty with this and, uh, and to do things. And, I mean, I think that's a fairly sophisticated-looking map. Uh, so there's a lot of care and curation going into these. Uh, oops, what's that? And you can see some of the activity around the world in weird places. Not weird places, but, uh, oh, yeah. And there's some time enabling going on in here at a very high level of some of those boundaries. So um, that's another map. Let's go back to the pitch somewhere. It's coming, or it's gone. <laughs> Where did my presentation go? Is it, ah, there we go. There we go. And so what's next? What's next time-wise? We're going to get this time slider launched in production so you don't have to go to a different site. Go to openhistoricalmap.org. It'll be there. We're getting search up and running. Uh, and then once we get it up and running, I need people to use it and then say what's broken, right? I need bug files to come in. I want trees to show up in rendering. I want peers to show up in rendering, um, that kind of stuff. But also lots of little odds and ends that I'm sure we'll find. And then we have other work. Uh, we'd make a JAWS unplug-in to make it easier to filter when you are editing. And if you're not nodding your head now, you will be after you try to do this, <laughs> I assure you. Uh, shorelines are weird in how OSM processes them. We're going to probably need to do some back-end stuff. I'm uh, going to inspect the inspector, which I will talk about in a second. And then this is very important. When you start mapping history, there's a lot of uh, work in what's going on in the field of digital humanities. And so uh, other people are doing work. And being able to tie to them, there's this whole field called linked open data. If you've ever tied to Wikidata article, I mean, a Wikipedia article, you're kind of part of that. And if you've linked to a Wikidata Q code, you are extremely part of like the linked open data infrastructure. And so very important as we start to create content here, I, that reminds me of one thing I've skipped over. Um, we'll come back to that. Uh, very important to kind of tie together, especially because if we start doing things like this, how many people have seen the mapping inspector? Everybody, right? You know, inspect this, this object this way. That's a lot of kind of some of it's interesting, and some of it's like not interesting. The fact that it's way number 1980999635 is like kind of super important to some things, but not really relevant if I'm just clicking on the, uh, on the Occidental Hotel and I just want to know about its history. So we're trying to figure out a way to take a lot of this information 
and present it in a way that's more readable by humans or more interesting for humans and to have some multimedia in there. Um, a suggestion we've had from a few people is also including like the base map that it came from. But so this is all work in progress. But the idea is to make it a little more of a um, interesting mixed media type of experience on top of uh, the map that we all love, which I love. Um, what's next? Community wise, probably getting the word out, giving pitches, how to's, uh, writing some articles. Probably the best way to stay abreast of what's going on uh, is a way that we haven't been using all that much until recently is the Slack channel. And I just like Slack. You can also send email to historic at openstreetmap.org. We try to put out notes of our biweekly meetings there. And every once in a while, there's some Twitter activity. Um, the most important thing is to start mapping your own projects and telling people, telling us what we need to fix and telling other people what kind of fun you're having with it. One thing I did want to talk, talk about is uh, I'm trying to encourage the tagging, speaking of the licensing discussion yesterday, trying to encourage licensing at the object level and doing other things at the, at the smallest level possible, source, author, um, attribution that you would like, and most importantly, and kind of interestingly for me, license. I'm trying, and I don't know if I speak on behalf of the larger community for OHM, I'm trying to encourage as much creation of CC0 data as possible to freely share what we found. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, uh, namely that you know, any encumbrance might make it past the first level of sharing, but I'm not quite sure it ever makes it past the second level of sharing. Um, so, um, for whatever that's worth. Um, there are a lot of historians who have data sets who want attribution, who don't want it to be shared, and I don't want to risk mixing that data in without it being discrete in a way that we can either pull it out or protect it uh, appropriately. And that is to help invite more people to participate. And it's, in talking with academics, I think it's a real, real potential uh, stickler and berry. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Rocks. He helped make, he helped make, this guy helped make the time slider. So he's the, so in the meantime, quit yapping. You guys have been too talkative here. Quit yapping and start uh, historical mapping. All right. Any questions? So can you describe, you or somebody else, describe uh, the challenges of getting the vector tiles working with the uh, ID editor, et cetera? Sure. So um, the vector tile stack is based on open map tiles. Um, so it uses the same data schema. So the biggest challenge there was uh, getting the dates plumbed through. Um, so that they can show up in the database that gets imported and then also so that they can get surfaced in the vector tiles and so that they can get surfaced in the vector tiles in a way that can be uh, conveniently and consistently filtered uh, because there's a difference between May 3rd, 1937 and 1937 and May 1937. Um, so how does all that stuff get taken care of? We've got some, par some partial solutions there, but um, that's actually probably one of the big open questions. Um, how do you have things that work back to prehistoric mapping? But that's really the, that was the biggest challenge. Are you working on a project similar? Oh, okay. Well, we'd be glad to Just answer if that yeah. was the case. Um, open map tiles has been great for that, though. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a great show. Any other questions? Does uh, does Wikipedia have a similar notion of kind of um, information sliced in in time slices? <laughs> um, well, what Wikidata there's a data type in Wikidata that is essential. Oh, sorry. Here. Thank you, Martin. So in Wikidata, you can upload a vector data set, and they have that, but they don't have it, as far as I can tell. Not a lot of people have done it. I've done it, uh, but I can't find too many others. And trying to figure out how to like scour their database and then pull it in um, would be great. And that's what I'm going to, I also try to work with the Wikimaps community to encourage them to do this. They're very pro, very positive this, but in the absence of a time slider, you know, my, my vision would be all maps in Wikipedia that are old maps be generated out of this. So um, anything else? Yeah. I have one more. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, ask another. So, um, just real quick, we, for sharing this, for uh, sh spreading the word, it would be cool also to have like being able to export a movie based on the time slider. Kind of yes. Uh, that's a good point. We don't have that feature yet. I have to say, personally, I've always been opposed to the time slider movies that you see in map animations because you can't stop them and you can't pan them and you can't zoom in. Like that's, that, that's, those are like my inspiration and my enemy at the same time, if that makes sense. I, I don't need a microphone. I can oh, no, no, not after all this. You got the microphone. <laughs> Uh, so how do you guys, uh, I saw that you, you deployed a, a custom version of uh, the ID editor. Um, have you, how do you get around uh, the limitation of, uh, you know, zooming in to edit? So for example, if you want to, if you want to put a country border mm. in 1620, um, what do you do? Do you go through Jossum yeah. or do you just, yeah. yeah. So for not this particular project, but for another project, I did change the ID editor so you could have a different base layer until you zoomed in far enough to zoom. Uh, I found that people didn't like switching between the two editors, and it was confusing. Uh, in this context, with the vector tiles and the time slider, I think it actually makes sense to do it um, with two separate interfaces. but. It is possible to do with an ID, and it looks like in version three of ID that they're moving more in that direction. Um, interesting project. Um, I was wondering if you're thinking of like maybe curated experiences. Like I like the the map in Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to like explore, maybe there could be like a like a way to see like where to zoom in. Mm -hmm. um, like maybe there's maybe there's like a map experience of like Rome um, sort of progressing through time and stuff mm -hmm. like that, or maybe there could be sort of like text at certain points sort of describing what's on the map or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I think that's a really good idea. I think that in order to build something like that, you would use everything we're building right now would be a building block for that, right? And then you could maybe put a control that says, fixate on this bounding box, highlight these tags, sort of like a manifest for a particular experience, and then wrap it and kind of control it a little more. And I think if we were to do something like that, these other uh, projects that want to be very specific and curated and their resistance to using something like this would be that they didn't feel like they could control enough of the environment and what shows up on the map you could start to give them the capability to do that. So I think you're absolutely right on. It's just uh, a few milestones down the road. And anything else? Oh. And I'm calling on you anyway, because you kind of scratched your head. I think this question is probably profoundly ignorant. Uh, but um, That's the most profound kind. <laughs> I mean, obviously, history history can be in dispute. What do you got? How's what's the philosophy for your project on, you know, whether something's actually located where it's located at a specific moment in time? Like, how do you guys handle that? What do you do if it's disputed? Just curious. Another great question. Um, my perspective is the best way to highlight. My perspective is the best way to highlight that is to show them both. And as long as you have a source, you could, you don't have to have a winner, right? You can at least show them both. Uh, a key example there is in Jerusalem, when they divided the city, it, they drew a marker. And how thick is that marker when you zoom into the ground? Where is that line? Is it the left side of the line, the right side of the line, the middle of the line? And the width of the line is a phrase you will find in the history of the conflict. What is the width of the line? And I would love to make a map of that. And then last question. So, like, uh, one of the major doubts I have about open historical map is that you are using OpenStreetMap data model. And in this data model, everything is connected to everything. So it's possible, for example, for some object to connect features from uh, 1600 and to, uh, 2000. Mm -hmm. 
kinds of data ranges. Or, for example, you can have a way with start date and end date, but nodes in it will have end date <laughs> far in the past. Yep. So did you have these issues and how do you handle them? Well, he's hitting the, the uh, nature of the power and the limits of the data model right now. So for right now, um, and that's a great question, right now I'm just asking people to do duplicate ways. So for example, the road network in Seattle, uh, you, when you first saw it, it's dirt. And then when I finish the demo, it's paved. So how do you change an attribute over time, right? I can change an object over time. I can change the shape over time. But how do I change those attributes? And for now, we're just going to have to ask people to put two things in the exact same place. Not the best answer, but not the worst answer either. So, and that's a little bit mapping for rendering, which has its own issues. But I think we'll get there, and we'll solve this problem. But that's a great question, Ilya. All right, I got to wrap up. I got to step aside. Thank you all. <laughs>